Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Behind me here, I have my new rig powered by the Stella Vita. And uh, tonight, we are going to give it my first night out with it. Going to see how it performs, how it goes. And uh, fingers crossed, everything's going to go according to plan. Well, let me give you guys a quick unboxing. We have this box here. Of course, have the Stella Vita itself. This one, I believe, is for the antenna. Yeah. So DC in, we have USB-C port over here, there, and SD card slot. So you, that's actually quite nice, I like that. So you can expand it with your own SD cards, okay. Ethernet, and one of these USB ports is labeled Wi-Fi. And exactly as on the SIR, DSLR port on the side and four output ports. Pretty standard, okay. Do we need a Wi-Fi dongle? Why would it need a Wi-Fi dongle if it has an antenna? So if you want to use it for Wi-Fi, we have to have that there. That seems super weird. What else do we have here? SD card. We got a USB cable. Standard USB cable. Wait, what? It has the weird USB-B port here on one end, but no USB-B port anywhere on the device. Okay, fair enough. A lot of... These are all power cables. Yeah, these are just all power cables. All of these are power cables, different lengths, and this is an extender, as you can see here. Okay. So the setup here is, of course, a Newtonian. It's an old um, Altair that I got secondhand. Um, I'm going to be running my um, ASI Air uh, 2600mm up here, filter wheel. I do have the rotator in here, as you can see. However, the, um, the Stella Vita does not support rotators at the moment. So I'll just be routing this basically as just a spacer tonight. I just didn't want to take it off the whole build. Focus mode off here, of course, from TubeTech. William Optics Uniguide 50 guide scope with also a guide camera down here from TubeTech. But of course the start of the show here is the Stella Vita sitting down here at the bottom. And it's gonna be the watch gonna control everything. Make sure that's proper in there. There we go. Power that on. And then we should be able to. That is on there. And then also turn on the mount. And I should say the mount that I'm going to be using is my Proxy Sky UMI 17S. Okay, we are connected up to the Stella Vita. Let's see what we can see here. Well, how do I get into the settings? Oh, here we go. Mount. Um, it apparently has what I think is an LX200 unstep. That's not correct. I am just manually gonna go and find. It is an unstep controller, so maybe it would work, but I'm just manually gonna go and find the correct driver for this. Oh, here we go, look at that. There's actually down, one down here that's called UMI. That is probably what I have to have to select. There we go. Okay, so I actually had drivers for it. Weird that I couldn't detect it, but okay, fair enough. Okay, that seems to be connected up correctly. So let's um, let's move on and move on to the main camera. It's already detected my main camera. Let's try to turn that on. Perfect. Binning. Gain looks good. Exposure. That seems rather low. Let's keep it at, I don't know, around a second for us to start with. We're probably going to be able to adjust this later, I hope. Okay, that seems to work. Guide camera. It detected the guide camera as well on its own, so that's good. We can turn that on. And... Oh, we need to probably put in the focal length. Did I do that up here? No, focal length zero is not right. We need to put in it's 800, like that. Guide camera, focal length here is 200. Fill the wheel, set WO. There we go, all the way at the bottom, set... Come on. Why is it refusing to do this now? Oh, I'm losing connection. So this is an issue I've had with it already, is the connection to this. Oh, there we go, now it's selected it. Is not the best in the world. I'm, oh God, I lost connection to it again, come on. 
Loading main camera data. Yeah, come on. There we go. There we go. Now we're on. Okay. The wind network on this is notorious bad. Even though I'm standing like arm's reach from it, I still lose connection all the time. It does come with a little dongle that's not in right now. I want to try to run it without it. Um, but if it gets too bad, I might have to switch, swap over to a, um, um, to a dongle instead. What I really want to try here is, is there any kind of like station mode or anything like that? Where was it here? Wi-Fi bridge internal adapter does not support wireless bridge. Please insert an external adapter and try again. So question is if that Wi-Fi bridge is actually the station mode. And what we need to do is to insert that little dongle for that to work. Let me just try that. All right, here it is. Just tiny little Wi-Fi adapter. And um, I do have a spare USB port. Well, let's try to put that in. Okay, look at that. Now that I'm connected with the dongle, now I can turn on the Wi-Fi bridge. And that looks like that's gonna be station mode. Okay. Now, luckily now we are getting very close to the point where we can begin to polar align and we can try the polar line routine. And as I said, we're also gonna need to focus the guide scope as that is out of focus. Um, and we probably also actually need to try and focus the main scope as that was right now just to rack all the way in. So we're gonna have to try and focus that too. Um, so we're gonna have quite some experimenting to do, um, but we need it to be a little bit darker before we can do that. First order of business was to get the main camera in focus. Not only was this the first night with the Stella Vita, this was also the first night with the telescope. That's just being a Newtonian, I was just manually moving the draw tube um, in and out just to try and get an approximate focus. Ideally, I wanted to try and use the autofocus, but I also knew that if I wasn't approximately correct, a lot of these autofocus routines will often fail as it needs to be actually be able to like identify a star. And as you can probably see here, I know I'm way out of collimation here. The point for the night here wasn't really necessarily to take good pictures, but more to get familiar with the device, get familiar with the rig. So I wasn't really too worried about things being out of collimation as I've been moving the telescope around and I was planning to move it around a lot more um, before we start taking any real images. Now through this focusing session, the Stella Vita performed flawlessly. So using that dongle and connecting it to a another Wi-Fi and then connecting in through that, is absolutely the way to go and is probably like highly recommend that you do that if you are going to get yourself a, a Stella Vita. Eventually I did get a manual focus that was I think good enough so I tried to run the autofocus routine and it worked as you would expect. Um, the autofocus completed and I was ready to move on. Next on my list was trying to get familiar with the polar alignment routine. Now if you run a polar alignment routine on a ASI Air this routine will be very, very familiar to you. Now, there's one thing that I found a little odd. If you look at the altitude and the azimuth numbers that I get, and you compare it to what it actually shows on the target reticle, they don't necessarily line up. So there's something going on with the calculation of where that dot needs to be. If you just take a look at this one, for instance, you can see here that both the numbers displayed show that I am... Uh, within one arc minute, I'm actually around half a arc minute, so 30 arcs, arc seconds away from the from perfect pole alignment here. But if you look at the dot, the dot is outside the um, the one arc minute ring, which doesn't make any sense. So there's something going on with that um, that, that I really hope uh, TubeTech is going to be able to fix in the future. So up until now, the Stella Vita has actually performed quite well. Um, but now I got into trying to focus my um, my guide scope. And initially I just tried to get a rough focus in, you know, take a picture, manually move the camera in and out of the guide scope until I got something that was decent enough. But it was at this point that I realized that I couldn't find any way to do more accurate focus other than just, you know, trying to make some fine tunings to the focus and looking if the stars look bigger or smaller than they did before. It actually took me multiple nights to figure out um, that you can just press and hold on a star and then it will show you statistics for the star, including the measurements for, the, uh, for how big the star is. And you can use that to get much more accurate focus. And now that we are talking guiding, 
this is a general issue that just makes the learning curve a little bit more difficult with the Stella Vita. And that is that there's a lot of menus and functions that are hidden behind long presses. Where, for instance, in the guiding interface, you have this dot with or this icon with three dots. When you press that, it starts guiding. It makes a lot of sense. You just need to learn that's the guiding icon. Um, but doing some of the nights, I was trying to uh, play around with it. And I even tested out the, um, the Meridian Flip, which worked as advertised. I could set the settings for the Meridian Flip. And when the time came, the mount did a Meridian Flip exactly as I wanted it to. But my guiding was way off afterwards, and that was likely due to me not having the correct setting for flipping the declination axis after Meridian flip and all that. That's user error, that's fine. But the problem was now I just wanted to recalibrate my guiding and no matter what I did, I couldn't figure out how to do it without shutting the device down completely, removing power and powering it back up. It turned out that Yes, if you then long press the guide button, then you get the option to recalibrate um, your guide settings. So the settings are there, but sometimes they're just a little hidden. And yes, if you sit down and read the manual, then those problems is not going to be an issue for you. Like the UI is just some places is really good. I like the settings interface, but other places it's just a little bit more clumsy. Like there's plenty of room out here on the, on the right why are you hitting features behind a long press when there's so much room and you can just make a dedicated button that would just recalibrate. So I began trying to adjust the guide settings and this is where I think the Stella Vita has a huge issue. Again, it took me multiple nights to figure out that if you try to change the settings for your guidings, that is like how aggressive it is, um, maximum pulse lengths, all those settings that we are used to and that should be there and that is there easily accessible. But if you try to change those settings while you are actively guiding, you don't get an error. Like the device allows you to do it, but it goes into a weird disconnect loop and it can stay there for hours um, where you would just constantly get disconnected and then you get connected and you can be connected to it for like 30 seconds 40 seconds that you get disconnected again um and it was just such a frustrating thing on the first night because i didn't know why it was suddenly doing this now driving home from my first night out with the stella vita i had really mixed feelings about it um on one hand i you know when it was like stable and it kept the connection it was actually quite enjoyable to work with but then when you get into those connection issue loops where we just for hours i would just sit and struggle with it just to try desperately to keep your connection off it's not the end of the world after you started the imaging but when it happens while you're trying to run through all the settings and you're constantly getting disconnected while trying to do something like pull aligning or whatever so frustrating and i was contemplating in the car on my way home after the first session out like oh my god should I just like strip it all down, sell it, and get a uh, get an ASIR, another ASIR for this scope as well? Um, I don't know if I would actually feel a little bad selling it, knowing like what state it's in. But I mean, it's not broken. It's just, yeah. But I decided to stick with it, and I actually took it out for for three more nights. And I've so far, at the time of this recording, I've collected around twelve hours of total data with it spent way more time with it than that. There's some evenings, like the second night I was out, everything just ran smoothly. I got through my entire setup, get the camera, main camera focused, polar aligned, get the guiding up and running, took 15 to 20 minutes and we were ready to image. It was just, it was perfect. And then the next night I spent an hour and a half before I even got to the point where I could begin taking any images because I was just struggling with connection issues and I was just having such a hard time getting the device to be stable. I'm definitely still going to be using it. I'm still going to keep it on this scope. I'm still going to keep practicing with it, keep getting the software updates when they do send them out, which I do quite often. So there is definitely very, very active development on this. So yeah, it's a very, very interesting device. I can definitely see it being a strong competitor, especially because it's not vendor locked. Like you can, as you've seen me use, I'm using ZWO cameras together with two tech stuff on the same device. That's such a huge selling point for me that you have more options in terms of what equipment you want to 
um, integrate with this device. And that's why I just badly really want this device to succeed and be good and be as feature rich and as competitive as what we get with the ASI Air. But for now, you can definitely feel that the Stellar Vita is a younger product than what we're used to with the ZWO ASI Air. Now, if any of you out there have any experience with this device yourself, please let me know in the comment section. I would love to hear your feedback. Plug that in there and it should lock in place. And now I should be able to just take a normal extinct. The first setting here is just the base ASIR setting. Here we can see the ASIR, the Wi-Fi um, uh, network it is 